So what we're going to be looking at here now is how to get a sketch of this cosine graph that's had a few various transformations applied to it. So following the steps that we laid out here, the first thing we can identify is this k value, this minus 1, which will result in a vertical shift down one unit. So to kind of get us started with that, we'll kind of want to draw in our midline, which will be shifted down from the equation y equals 0 to y equals negative 1. So we can sketch that midline in just as a dotted line. That's going to be our new middle value on our cosine graph. From here, we can identify our amplitude for this, our a value, to be 4. So we can use that to help us how to figure out how to label our y-axis. So we know we're going to be able to go up 4 units from our midline, so up to 3 on our y-axis, and also go down 4 units down to negative 5 on our y-axis. And then we can sketch in those min and max lines to help us kind of set an upper bound and a lower bound to our graph, help it keep a little more organized. So after we have our midline and our min and maxes figured out, let's calculate the period. So looking at this B value of 1 third, we can remember that we can calculate the period by simply doing 2 pi over our b value. So 2 pi over b works out to be 2 pi over 1 third, which gives us a period of 6 pi. And since we want all of our sine and cosine graphs to include at least one full period, uh, we'll want to make sure that our x-axis is labeled from 0 out to 6 pi. And again, since all of our key values are going to occur on kind of the quarter marks from here, we're going to quarter from 0 to 6 pi. So easiest way to do that is go to the halfway point first. So halfway between 0 and 6 pi is 3 pi. Halfway in between 0 and 3 pi would be 3 pi over 2. And then between 3 pi and 6 pi would be uh, 4 and a half pi, which is the same thing as 9 pi over 2. So we've got our x-axis appropriately labeled here. Last thing we're going to want to do is identify our phase shift. So we can kind of look at our h value here. And remember that in order to calculate the phase shift, we simply just do our h over the b. So we'll have pi over 2 divided by 1 third, which is the same thing as 3 pi over 2. And since we're, we're adding on this pi over 2 here, we know this will result in a phase shift to the left, 3 pi over 2 units. So once we have all this information down, we can actually start and go ahead and sketch our graph. So what we should do first is just get a sketch of our graph without the phase shift, and then we'll just move everything over to the left, 3 pi over 2 units. So since we're graphing cosine, we know our cosine always occurs when our x value is 0, it'll be at a maximum. And then it will cycle through the intercept, and then down to the minimum, back up to the intercept, and then up to a maximum. And we can just kind of get a light sketch here of what we can expect this to look like before we even worry about the phase shift. And that's what we have here in the red. What we're going to want to do next is take a look at our phase shift. We're going to move this whole thing 3 pi over 2 to the left, and we can see that, well, we don't have any labels on our x-axis out there, so it might make it a good idea to throw one over there. So if we're going to go another 3 pi over 2, lucky for us, that's what our units were already measured out in, so we can just continue by another predefined unit of 3 pi over 2 to the left, which would move it over to negative 3 pi over 2. Last step for us, just go point by point, moving each key point over that 3 pi over 2 units to the left. And you'll see we're going to get a very similar graph, just shifted over, just like we saw with any other sort of transformation of functions in the past. And when you're done, we'll have one full period of our fully transformed cosine graph.